Hello everyone, I'm Zeli from Tsinghua University. I will be presenting our work Interpreting Deep Learning Based Networking Systems. This is a joint work with Minghu, Jiasong, Mingwei from Tsinghua, Hongzi from MIT, and Hongxin from Clemson. As you may know, many recent networking systems start to employ deep learning algorithms, and some are even being deployed in the industrial applications, and the reason is quite straightforward. Deep neural networks can offer higher performance than heuristic algorithms by around 30% in those systems. However, operators might confront a series of problems of deep learning-based networking systems. The first is how to design the neural network structure themselves with limited knowledge in deep learning. There might be candidate neural network structures. Note that despite they are equivalent when you consider the neural network as a black box, Different structures can lead to different training efficiency and affect the final performance. Network operators might not have enough knowledge to decide which structure is better. The second question is how to debug and fix the problems in DNS. Let's look at this example. In a scheduling system, suppose one flow is hardly chosen. If the decision-making algorithm is the shortest of first scheduling, operators might know that it's starvation and introduce the aging mechanism to fix the problem. But among massive numbers of neurons, how can operators know which part of the neural network goes wrong? The third question is how to deploy those systems onto network devices. The first barrier is the resource consumption of neural networks. Many networking systems are deployed on resource-limited devices, such as switches and mobile phones. The computation ability, memory, and the storage of network devices do not match the need of deep learning. The second barrier is the long decision latency of neural networks. For example, consider a peripheral level switch scheduler in the data center. When the scheduling decisions come back after tens of milliseconds, most flows in the data center have already run out. Finally, when the operators want to ad hoc adjust the existing rules of networking systems, such as routing reconfigurations, how can the adjustments be performed on the DNN-based rules. Let's see an example of a deep learning-based routing optimizer. Now the network operators want to migrate yellow flows away from the link between node 7 and 10 due to some reasons such as pricing. If it's the shortest path to routing, network operators can just recompute the second optimal path for those flows. But for neural networks, the decision of one flow may affect another flow because neural networks are not robust to input changes. Other unrelated flows such as the green flow in the figure, might also be affected in the recomputation. Now we know that DNNs are difficult to design, deploy, debug, and ad hoc adjust for network operators, and the root cause is network operators cannot understand why deep neural networks make such decisions. So what if we can interpret the behaviors of deep learning-based networking systems and speculate how and why they make such decisions? Thus, I'm going to introduce METIS, a general framework that provides interpretability for networking systems and therefore sheds light on the problems above. So here is a challenge. As we can see, there are many scenarios under the umbrella of networking systems. How can we interpret those diverse systems? We find that they naturally fall into two categories, local systems and global systems. Local systems collect information locally and make decisions for one instance only, such as congestion control and global systems make global planning for multiple instances, such as the software-defined networking controller. For local systems, we find that existing policies are usually rule-based with a simple decision logic. Therefore, we convert the neural networks inside those local systems into simpler and self-interpretable models. Our design choice is to convert those policies into decision trees, which are lightweight enough for networking systems and can represent very complex policies by design. Therefore, we adopt a conversion method based on a teacher-student learning process. Operators still need to train the DNN first, then the DNN acts as a teacher, and generate the input-output samples to construct the decision boundary in the state space. The decision tree is therefore constructed according to the samples of the DNN. For global systems, we find that we can formulate many of them with hypergraphs. So what's a hypergraph? In the traditional graph, an edge connects two vertices, and in a hypergraph, a hyperedge can cover multiple vertices. So how do we formulate global systems in hypergraphs? We find two outstanding features of global systems, graph-structured input-output, and the bivariate mapping. 
Graph structure input output means that the inputs or outputs of the global systems are graphs, such as the network topology. For example, we can formulate the interaction between routing paths and links as the relationship between hybridages and vertices. By variant mapping means that the global systems construct mapping between two variables, such as allocated resources requests. In such case, the two variables can therefore be formulated as node and hybridage. With the hypergraph formulation, the next step is to find out which connection between hybridage and the node is critical to the optimization result. The high-level concept is that we calculated the importance to the optimization goal of every connection in the hypergraph. Operators can therefore use this information to understand why DNS make such decisions. And to make sure that the interpretation results to be understandable, we have three goals to balance. Methods will balance the performance degradation, interpretation consistency, and the determinism of the interpretation to make sure that the interpretations are of high quality. And for more details, please refer to our paper. Now I will show you some experiments that we did. We implemented methods onto three deep learning based network systems. Two of them are local, and the remaining one is a global system. The interpretations of Pencil is a decision tree. We can clearly see the decision logic from the figure. On the top two layers, Pencil first classifies inputs based on the last chunk bit rate, or RT, which is different from existing methods. Manis discovers that the information contained in the RT affects the performance significantly. We further show how Mattis improved the design of Pencil, as we interpreted it before. Mattis finds that Pencil significantly relies on RT when making decisions. We concatenate RT to the output layer so that it can affect the prediction result directly. We then evaluated the quality of experience of two models, from the curves of the original model and the modified model. We can see that the modification improves both training efficiency and the final QE. The second case is how Metis helps operators to debug Pencil. Pencil is known to have the problem of missing bit rate. We present the frequencies of selected bit rates by different algorithms. But when it comes to Pencil, Two bidders have an extremely low probability to be chosen, indicating that Pencil falls into a local optimum, which has also been mimicked by Metis. Without Metis, operators have to retrain the DNS for hours to days, without knowing whether it can escape the local optimum itself or not. The conversion from DNN to decision trees in Metis exposes the interface for network operators to fix the problem. Since the dataset to train the decision tree is highly imbalanced, we oversample the missing bit rates during the conversion. Compared to the original pencil, the oversampled decision tree outperforms by about 1% on average on two sets of traces. We further show how many this helps to deploy on the case of auto. The per flow decision latency of auto is 62 milliseconds on average. Converting DNN to decision trees enables us to make per flow decisions for more flows with a short decision latency. In this case, methods to get with the auto can cover 39% of flows on the same traces. By covering more flows and performing more precise per flow control, methods together with auto can improve the average performance by up to 5%. Detailed analysis show that the improvement mainly comes from the optimization of those median flows, which are newly covered by methods. Finally, we have a case on how methods helps operators to ad hoc adjust the root net system. Suppose we have a flow from node A to node E and it needs rerouting away from the original path P0. There are several candidates, such as P1 and P2. P1 diverts from P0 and node A. W01 is the significance of the connection between P0 and the link A to B. We find a correlation between W01 and W02 and the delay of path P1 and P2. With the dataset evaluated in RootNet, about 90% of points fall into the yellow and green area. This demonstrates the correlation between these two pairs of values. Thus, we provide an indicator for network operators to decide which path to reroute without estimating the end to end path latency. As a summary, we first demonstrated several problems of existing deep learning based networking systems. We then designed methods, which first categorize diverse systems into local and global ones, and then interprets them with decision trees and hypergraphs. In our experiments, we implement METIS with three systems to show preliminary cases on how METIS can help network operators to design, debug, deploy, and ad hoc adjust those deep learning based networking systems.
More details and the open source codes can be found in our website. We do hope that Matrix could shed the light on and accelerate the deployment of deep learning based systems in the networking community. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you. That was great. Um, let me start with a question from Slack. Uh, Aditi asks, um, does this mean that one could directly use decision trees for the same problem rather than using complex DNNs? Um, that's a good question. I think this mainly comes from how you train the decision tree. Because you know, in the networking systems, usually the problem is a sequential decision making problem. And you need to you need to make changes on the, for example, if you are using the neural network, you need to change the parameters in the neural network with some algorithms such as the policy gradients. But for decision trees, I think um, the training of decision trees or the adjusting of decision trees during the dynamic training of the sequential decision making is quite challenging. Okay, so Yuliang uh, Li asks, can you imagine a process of um, deep learning to decision tree to modify decision tree, right? So you get a new deep learning model so you can get a better model with human insights. Um, and yeah, go ahead. You. Yeah, that's also a great question. I think um, the, method, the, the use of methods is to help network operators to understand the neural network model. And if you have a new decision tree or if you have new insights on decision tree, you can do anything you, you want to do. For example, if you just want to uh, deploy it onto network devices, you do not need to turn it into a new DNA model. But if you want to improve the performance by, um, by fix the structure or debug the structure of the deep neural networks, you can just to help use this decision tree to help you revise the structure of DNA and get a new DNA. It's really up, up to you uh, how you use the decision tree or how you use the insight to improve your structure or improve your system. Mm -hmm. So I had a question for you. So uh, is this a very general approach or what makes it specific to networking? Um, um, yeah, that, that's also a great question. Actually, our design fall into a two parts. And uh, as, as we talk in the video, uh, the local system part is mainly based on an existing algorithm. That is not that uh, related to networking parts. The only related one is the networking systems are usually the sequential decision making. And for the global systems, I mean the hypergraph based modeling, that's quite a related networking. Because you know, uh, in networking systems, usually networking systems allocate resources to requests. For example, in the NFV, we usually allocate servers to the network functions. And in the other cases, we usually allocate resources to some uh, flows or some requests. The allocation, the, the bivariate allocation is, I think, one of the uh, important features that Medis discovers that helps to interpret the behaviors. Okay, so there are a couple of um, questions coming along. So one is from Sachin Ashok that says, does every DNN susceptible to being converted into a decision tree? Uh, Kelvin Ings um, says, does converting a DNN to a decision tree require training a decision tree? So I guess uh, maybe you could combine some of those and answer them. Uh, yeah, the, uh, both of them are very good questions. I think, yeah, we do need to train a decision tree. And a decision tr the training part of a decision tree needs some tricks from the DNN. For example, you need to get the input and output of the DNN. And to ensure that the sampling of the DNN is, is big enough to cover the uh, state space of the operator's scenario. So uh, we have several algorithms and actually we adopt several algorithms from the machine learning community to help us to make sure that the sampling or the conversion from the neural network to decision tree is to optimize the, for the optimization goal. For example, the flow completion time or the uh, QOE in the case of ABR. And please read our papers for the details of the conversion. Okay. Um, I think Chen Yu Yen asks, when you, how do you ensure the conversion of decision tree does not suffer performance loss? I, I don't know if that you've already covered that, but feel free to add more if you like. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Actually, at the current stage, we cannot guarantee the performance loss uh, during the conversion because you know you have different neural networks and you have different structures and you have different input outputs. But in general, we can say that we have we do have several attempts on the on the theoretical analysis of the a conversion. And for example, on the case of APR, and that's actually is one of our future work. Actually, it's one of our ongoing work. And for the general cases, we do not 
we cannot guarantee the performance loss during the conversion. But in most cases, for example, in the case of pencil and in the case of auto, uh, the performance loss is quite satisfactory. Uh, I think the, the figure is, is the performance loss during the conversion is uh, less than 3% uh, in our experiment set settings. Okay. And I think uh, one, uh, probably a last question is, um, so in some of your performance results, the improvement numbers were relatively small, if I was reading them right. Have you right. thought about where um, you can get bigger improvements or is it just saying that the other systems are very well tuned? Um, yeah, I think the main benefits of methods is to help network operators understand the structure, not to improve the performance. And the improvement are based on the understandings or the interpretations of the neural networks. And so I think uh, we use, it's only decision trees to outperform neural networks by about, for example, 1%, 2%, or 5%, 8% in some cases. Uh, the, the main result or the main uh, benefit is to understand and not to the performance improvement. After understanding, of course, after all, you have ma many benefits. For example, you can believe or you can trust the, the policies and you can believe that it is, it's not going to fail because the decision trees are easy to understand. I think that's the main benefits of the methods. Hi, Billy. That was an interesting talk. Um, we are still waiting for questions on Slack. Uh, so, um, given that in most of these systems, uh, decision trees are able to, uh, you know, give good performance uh, in place of DNNs, uh, do you re uh, kind of envision? reinforcement learning with decision trees instead of policy neural networks. Um, would you think that is a better fit? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Actually, uh, my, my insight would be that if you try to train a decision tree in reinforcement learning or in the sequential decision process, you, it's very difficult to update the decision tree. For example, update the leaf nodes, update the uh, division values, but for the neural networks, there are some mature algorithms such as the policy gradients and DPG, DDPG, something like that. Um, we currently the decision tree uh, because decision tree models are non-parametric models. Uh, they can they can grow and they, you can cut the leaves, you can cut the branches. So it is quite hard to design a, an algorithm to train a decision tree without a label in the sequential decision making process or in the settings of reinforcement learning. So our design choice is to train the neural networks as the previous systems and to convert those systems into these entries. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so based on your experience with these controllers, are there any uh, specific structures in the DNN that make it easier for you to convert it into decision tree, which can be more easily interpreted? <laughs> That's also a good question. Actually, the, uh, my experience is that the most systems in the network community are at a very prelim preliminary stage. But most systems have less than 10 layers, and which is quite a small number compared to the NLP models such as GPT-3. So most of the models are just simple RNN or even the fully connected layers. So the structure is quite simple, and I can't see any, <laughs> any difference from the structure. Our, our designs try to find out how to organize the structure to put more significant variables near to the output layer. And the, the design of the system system usually take just, the, for example, uh, the, the fully connected layers with our uniform input, something like that. Mm 